I grew up in a small village in Pakistan. When I was a kid, I'd think the locusts descending upon our fields. Farmers were with their pans and pots, whatever they had in their hands, banging them to make sure that the locust goes away from their farm. They will go into what we call recessions for long periods of time. Environmental conditions will change, there'll be a lot of rainfall. All of a sudden, we have an upsurge and an outbreak. It's this emergency again where there's been loss of resources, loss of infrastructure, people in charge have changed, folks have retired, the problem has kind of gone away, and then it's back in many countries that have less access to resources and less infrastructure that gets maintained over time. Anytime there's a significant outbreak, we see that the governments, especially the one in Pakistan, is going to go ahead and cut down the resources for women's education, for women's professional development. Now you have generation of women that are not going to be educated. I mean, that is just mind-blowing, and it is, it is extremely heartbreaking. The actual management of locusts is just as much a, a cultural and an economic and a social problem as it is a biological problem. And so there's no way to make this more sustainable without broad collaboration from a lot of stakeholders and disciplines. This is a global problem and it requires a global approach. You need people from all over the world in different disciplines. Sustainability majors, policy makers, farmers, builders. At BPRI, we have a stakeholder meetings where the scientists bring in the locust control people in the field from different countries. We've done it for Mexico, we've done it for Argentina. The idea is for us to listen. I joined the Global Locust Initiative Lab at Arizona State University, primarily interested in understanding how I can use my knowledge of biochemistry and apply it to curbing locust outbreaks. When it comes to data, we've been Our main goal is really to engage key actors from locust management and research to forge sustainable solutions and partnerships around the globe. Our online platform that we call Hopperlink, we have 200 members from over 40 different countries. We can come together as a community to share news, updates, and share research. Many times when scientists study something, those things get published in scientific literature and stay there. We understand their biology really, really well. But what does that mean for people who are affected by locusts in Africa? At BPRI, we're trying to change that in a way that we want to translate our research into something that can actually help people. This is really exciting because it's so interdisciplinary. We are looking at this problem from genetics and from ecosystems, from molecules to management, if you will. There's this sense that we're really kind of looking at it holistically. One of the things that this reveals is that there are ramifications from human land management and land tenure that could have impacts on the frequency and duration of these outbreaks in some species. For instance, overgrazing or underfertilizing land is producing this perfect locust food in some context. In Senegal, we looked at this on a broad scale with 100 collaborating farmers. We have to do a great job also trying to see how different ecosystems will respond to climate change. We have to work together to solve this challenge, to understand their biology, to understand how we can sustainably manage them. And it's inspiring to talk to people in all these different cultures, different languages all over the world and hear their story, hear their interactions of locusts, how it impacted them growing up, why they're interested in studying them. We are on the verge of achieving something great, something amazing, something we can push ourselves a bit more uh, that's not only a scientific achievement, but also can help people. The work shouldn't stop. The problem that we're tackling is much bigger than five-year project. 
what I would hope for the future is that we can move on this road towards integration and iteration and exchange of ideas among biologists of all different disciplines, among social scientists, among folks from the humanities, and very importantly, stakeholders on the ground who are impacted by locusts.